How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a spectacular day. Please give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys have not already. Also do me the biggest favor of all. Hit that bell notification button and select all for all notifications so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. If you guys would also please head over to Twitch. Follow me there at Douglas447. I do stream there at least once a week whether it's for Call of Duty, Battlefield, Halo, Destiny 2. And if you guys have any movies or shows or games you guys want me to cover here on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. And we're going to be doing my review of the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show here on Disney Plus in 2022. And we're going to discuss, do I hate this show or do I love this show? Now for the past six weeks that this show has been airing, one episode a week, there's been a lot of love, a lot of passion, and there's also been a lot of... Um, hate towards it <laughs> to put up politely um when this show got announced and as i watched the show i went into you know watching it and watching the trailers with no expectations i didn't expect anything from the show i never wanted this show because i've watched tons of clone wars the bad batch rebels and i just really never cared about knowing what obi obi-wan kenobi was doing protecting Luke on Tatooine and I just like it's one of those things where I'm just like okay there's like a base knowledge that the Star Wars shows in the past and the Star Wars movies give you and with the show with Star Wars and Disney it's just like okay they really need to stop thinking of ways to answer questions to all the mysteries like not knowing everything about what every single character is doing during the Star Wars timeline allows for us as an audience to have imagination and the guess. And it seems like Star Wars just doesn't care about that. They just want us fill in every single blank possible. So because of that, I watched the show, just seeing how it fit into the lore. Did it fit into the canon? Is it good, average, or bad? And honestly, this is a very average show. Um... I'm going to do a general overview and then I'm going to kind of dive into the later episodes individually during this review and there is a lot that I wrote down so bear with me this is going to be a very long video. So first of all there are a number of cameos from like the actor of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Ian McGregor. His daughter actually shows up which I thought was pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of great action throughout the show. Unfortunately, the first three episodes kind of is a drag. It's a lot of drama. It's a lot of like, ooh, look at all these cool locations, and here's all these fan services and Easter eggs and references. And then the second half of the show, the story actually picks up. Um, cool highlight reel of the prequels that help set up the show, especially for the first episode. And that's kind of it when it comes to overall positives for the show the show kind of unfortunately makes kenobi kind of stupid like kenobi literally tells his enemies his weaknesses it makes the stormtroopers stupid they literally sit right next to him but don't recognize him even though there is a galaxy-wide manhunt with pictures and details of what obi-wan kenobi looks like and these stormtroopers that have seen this can't recognize Obi-Wan Kenobi is literally sitting right next to them on this transport and it's just like the writing is stupid the direction the storytelling the plots most of the characters are just garbage the villains of this show are a bunch of crybabies <laughs> the the camera work is horrific I just I am just astonished the show for the first three episodes especially turns Obi-Wan Kenobi into a Luke sad guy from Star Wars The Last Jedi like he literally disconnects himself from the force to try to make it so the Empire can't find him so if the Empire can't find him they can't find Luke but how are you supposed to how is Obi-Wan Kenobi supposed to protect Luke Skywalker if the Empire does show up if he's disconnected from the force also Obi-Wan Kenobi buries his lightsaber underneath the Dune Sea, away from any landmark. <laughs> I am just, I am 
I am befuddled. I am shocked. Also, the force powers usage and their limits and the rules makes zero logic. Like, things just happen, and then you think, okay, you should be able to use the force for this situation. And the characters don't do it for the sake of the show needing to go on. Um, I loved seeing a lot more of Order 66. The third sister, Reva, is an okay character. It's average. She's very one-dimensional. I never liked her, and I never hated her. I know a lot of people on the internet are like bashing her or they're like oh she's a really, a really amazing character i'm like <sighs> at the end of this show she literally just distances herself from the dark side and she's now kind of like an ahsoka character it's like she's no longer evil but she's not also a jedi so she's just like some sort of force wielder that just walks around the galaxy doing whatever she wants to now and it's just like we've already gotten that twice no three times we've gotten ahsoka we've gotten luke skywalker and ezra bridger and it's like do we really need a fourth character that literally has the exact same outcome for her character <laughs> like come up with something different when it comes to a star wars character okay just something a little just a tad bit different um so in and then lastly uh, we also get to see Alderaan. We get to see a little more. But unfortunately, I was not impressed. It looked more like a fancy Disney park instead of an actual Star Wars planet. Um, we do get to explore a bunch of new planets in this show, but none of them are given names, so it kind of makes the locations feel more like green screen set pieces instead of actual living worlds that we should care about. It's just like, hey, look, it's a rock planet. Hey, look, another rocky planet, but I have some fog. And I'm like... I don't know what these planets are called because you never give them names throughout the show once. And if you do, they're not memorable and no one's going to care. So, there you go. Alright, so diving into episode 3. First of all, the show finally gets the assemble of Darth Vader at his castle. And that was really cool. We get to see the Inquisitor Fortress. And it's something I've wanted to always see in live action. Like we've gotten a glimpse of it in past Star Wars canon and lore, but finally seeing it in live action is really cool. And episode three, we get the meeting between Vader and Obi-Wan. It was kind of short and I was like, okay, please tell me that there's going to be more of Obi-Wan and Vader in the future. And there is. Uh, episode four is really where the show kicks off. It's like the first, like I said, the first three episodes, it's like, introducing all the characters it's introducing all the rules the players what's going on and it's literally three episodes of setup for episode four five and six which is what people are actually going to remember when it comes to the only one kenobi show so in episode four we get to see more of the beginning of the rebellion we get to see the inquisitor fortress a lot more explored and we see that for those people that don't know what the inquisitor fortress is it's basically a tomb of all the dead jedi um, including Master Mace Windu. So he is dead. He did not survive the events of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, I thought it was kind of weird, though, that at the end of the episode, the Rebellion somehow has those snow attack fighters from The Empire Strikes Back. I'm just like, how do you guys have these things 10, 20, 30 years before the events of Empire Strikes Back when those fighters were specifically created because of the rebellion being on off like x-wings and whatnot could not properly fly and fight on off so that's why they came out with those snow attack fighters i'm just like how and why do you guys have these things when it comes to this show when you guys shouldn't have them it's just kind of confusing when it comes to timeline and connecting everything in uh, episode 5 is basically The Empire Strikes Back. Again, we get flashbacks of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker training on Coruscant. Um, Reva becomes the Grand Inquisitor for some reason. <laughs> uh, uh, we also get the revelation that Reva, you know, I, I saw this coming a mile away, though, but the revelation that Reva was once a Jedi Padawan that Anakin Skywalker spared and turned her into an Inquisitor. And Reva has been playing this long con for a perfect moment to kill Vader because Reva has been looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi so they can team up to fight Vader. But Obi-Wan just leaves her behind to fight Vader by herself. 
episode five really has a lot of bizarre storytelling and plots that makes no sense. Uh, Vader does pull a star killer move where he force pulls and holds a entire starship using the force with one hand in place. And I thought that was like, that was a really cool moment. Maybe Dave Filoni and the rest of the Star Wars gang will actually give us a a Star Wars The Force Unleashed movie or show. That would be awesome. And then at the end of Episode 5, we get the Fantastic Reaver versing Vader duel. And uh, the Grand Inquisitor is still alive. No explanation how, even though everyone says, oh, he just got stabbed in the stomach. Sure. Okay. Whatever. And um, the, the battle between Reva and Vader ends with Reva dying. But unfortunately... She doesn't because I guess she has a second stomach. So it's like anytime anyone gets stabbed in the stomach or the gut with a lightsaber, somehow you just survive. <laughs> it kind of makes lightsabers in the Star Wars universe worse than a blaster rifle. It's really silly and bizarre that lightsabers somehow have become weaker as a weapon choice than an actual blaster rifle. Um, we do get a lot in episode 6, some fantastic music, great space battle. We get the epic Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Vader lightsaber duel, the finale. Get several callbacks and references to Star Wars prequels, including I Will Do What I Must, Then You Will Die, Hello There, and of course, The High Ground. Um, Reva ends up surviving the end of episode 5, and she goes all the way to Tatooine and tries to kill Luke, but she doesn't do so because... She has more mercy and compassion, so she goes from being a Inquisitor Sith to becoming just some person out there in the galaxy walking around that can use the Force. Um, when it comes to the Obi-Wan and Vader final duel, I thought it was really cool showing how powerful both are with lightsabers and how both are powerful using the Force. Um, at the end, Obi-Wan Kenobi could have easily destroyed and killed Vader, but because of emotions and because it has to tie in with a new hope he can't do so so like literally he just he could easily have killed vader but for some reason you know it's got to tie into a new hope and he can't do that because i've already established canon and lore unfortunately <clears throat> so kind of makes you wonder if obi-wan kenobi is the chosen one <laughs> he literally defeats vader twice before luke has a chance um i love the moment uh when obi-wan and vader both realize that anakin destroyed um anakin to become vader and obi-wan didn't kill anakin skywalker anakin did that uh, vader did that so that was kind of cool just really emotional and impactful thing um at the end obi-wan <clears throat> at the end obi-wan kenobi does become powerful enough again to protect Luke. We get the appearance of Liam Neeson again as uh, Qui-Gon Jinn as an appearance cameo. And we also get to see Vader's castle on Mustafar and uh, Ian McGregor as Emperor Palpatine as well. Overall, I thought, like I said, the first half of the show, kind of slow, kind of boring, didn't really have much of an impact on me as a Star Wars fan. But the second half was a little better and at least it was enjoyable to watch and it does a great job tying Obi-Wan Kenobi into the events of Star Wars A New Hope. So with that, overall, I'm going to give this show a 5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with me on anything I've said in this video in the comment section down below. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.